Welcome back. This is part three of a four-part series on cosmic inflation. Part one, I introduced the horizon and flatness problems, the weaknesses in the standard vanilla unextended version of Big Bang cosmology. And in part two, I talked about the monopole problem and the phase transition in the early universe that may hold the key to solving every issue in your life as long as those issues are the horizon problem, the flatness problem, and or the monopole problem. And I want to talk a little bit about the actual physics the mechanics of inflation, of, of how this process actually happens. In, Guth, in Alan Guth's original model, Alan Guth being the physicist who first conceived of this idea as we understand it today, and then how we've actually changed that idea. In Alan Guth's model, the universe is undergoing a phase transition where the strong nuclear force is splitting off from the other two forces, weak nuclear force and electromagnetism that it had been bound to in this super high energy, super duper high temperature state when the universe was only 10 to the minus 35 seconds old. It undergoes a phase transition, the strong nuclear force breaks off and then cosmic expansion history continues. The universe continues to cool down. The universe can tool, uh, continues to get bigger. Eventually, weak nuclear splits off, and then we have the four forces of nature and all the normal physics happens. In Goose's model of inflation, the universe gets stuck in the middle of that phase transition. Instead of going cleanly, to the new state, the universe, it, it's like stuck halfway down. Like imagine the universe is falling down a hill and at the bottom of the valley is, is like where it's headed, where all the forces are split from each other and everything's all happy and separated and ground state and all that. But there's like a little, a little divot, a little dip here. And the universe gets stuck there for a while. And in that stuck state, the universe's vacuum has an incredible amount of energy. And this vacuum energy drives a period of accelerated expansion. If that sentence was totally confusing to you, then go back to watch my videos that I re just released about a month ago about the nature of dark energy, because this is the exact same picture we have for dark energy where high amounts of vacuum energy in the quantum fields of nature can produce accelerated expansion. This is exactly why I wanted to take my time with inflation because there's a lot of jargon here that comes in really, really quick. Quantum fields are a fundamental part of everyday life. They are our fundamental description of matter at its most basic level. And these quantum fields that permeate all of space-time have energy associated with them in the vacuum so that even if you get rid of all the particles, there's still an energy there in the, in the background, like a background hum to the universe. And when this phase transition occurred, when the universe was really young, 10 to the minus 35 seconds old, in, in Alan Goose's inflationary picture, the universe gets stuck there's an unnaturally high amount of vacuum energy. This unnaturally high amount of vacuum energy inflates the universe to ridiculous proportions. Then to get unstuck, the universe kind of sort of quantum tunnels itself. Now, quantum tunneling, I haven't talked about yet in detail that I'll just save that for a future episode. So for us, all we need to care about is that inflation ends quickly and suddenly that the universe gets stuck in this state, inflation occurs, and then it gets itself unstuck, and then the rest of the evolution of the universe continues, but now in a much, much bigger universe. The problem with this picture is that inflation ends too quickly because the act of inflation is great 
it makes the universe flat, gets rid of all the monopoles, makes sure everything is connected before sending it off in uh, onto its own fate. So it solves all those problems, but it introduces a problem of its own. The exact same mechanism, the exact same mechanism that takes all the monopoles, all the nasty bugs and critters that we want to get rid of and sends them away by diluting them, also gets rid of all the stuff. It gets rid of all the matter and all the radiation, all the stuff, you know, that populates the universe and we really enjoy having around. So at the end of inflation, whatever caused inflation has to reheat the universe. It has to flood it with matter and radiation. And in Alan Guth's original model, this event happens too quickly to have a universe full of stuff. So in the following years, after Alan Guth proposed this in 1980, we tweaked inflation. Instead of getting stuck in this state and then tunneling through, we introduced a new character to the universe. Introduced a new character that's going to drive inflation through the process of this phase transition. So the same epoch, the same energy scales as before, but there's going to be a new character in this story. And the new character is called, are you ready for this? The inflaton. The inflaton is the thing that makes inflation happen. The inflaton, and it's just such a ridiculous name to say, but what are we going to do about it? The inflaton is a quantum field, just like all the other quantum fields that make up all matter and radiation in our universe. It's just another one, another ingredient to the soup. The inflaton in the very early universe is evolving slowly, Draw, has a very large vacuum energy, drives the accelerated expansion of the universe, makes that inflation happen. Then it has a very peculiar trajectory. The inflaton stops inflating the universe. And I know I'm being very fuzzy with my language here. But uh, one way to put it is that the inflaton changes its character so that it stops inflating the universe and then settles down in decays and fills up the universe with matter and radiation. And then everything else happens it, according to normal the big the normal big bang cosmology picture and by the way since we're talking about the universe being only 10 to the minus 35 seconds old here you wouldn't naturally expect the standard big bang picture developed in like the 1930s to adequately cope with the universe under these extinct under these conditions it's kind of new physics happening here so so of course the big bang model is gonna have to be modified to account for it so this sounds a little bit fishy right we're constructing this event of inflation to solve all the problems that it creates. Like, oh yeah, we've got this flatness problem, this monopole problem, so let's have the universe undergo a period of rapid expansion. Okay, our initial guess of how the universe undergoes rapid expansion introduces some problems of its own, so let's change what drives that expansion and how it ends and how the process and how its evolution is, and that will solve all our problems. I I 100% agree that this sounds a little bit fishy, that we're just basically, we're making stuff up as we go along. So that's what I want to talk about in the next episode is an actual solid bona fide prediction of inflationary theory and why this particular model of inflation that we call slow roll inflation, where inflation evolves for some amount of time drives that accelerated expansion, then changes how it evolves and instead of driving expansion, fades into the background and decays into a swarm of matter and radiation. That's going to be the subject of the next episode, but I want to get this physics of the gut transition and inflation in before we get to the real juicy bit. And that will come next week. And I'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit thumbs up. Make sure you get notified and go to patreon.com slash pmsetter to learn how you can support 
this show. See you next time.